For an assessment of the latest GOP debate, we turn to Corey Bowles. He's a senior analyst with Eurasia. Corey, good to see you again. Thanks for having me on, Rhonda. In your view, were there clear winners in that debate? Yeah, no, I think for the second debate in a row, Senator Marco Rubio of Florida and Senator Ted Cruz of Texas both fared well. They they had some prominent moments. They did not seem to lose their train of thought. And when it came to detailed policy discussion, both of them were able to rather eloquently explain their policy positions. There was perhaps one of the most interesting moments in the debate when uh, uh, Senator Rand Paul tried to accuse Rubio of not being conservative enough uh, uh, in regards to both his spending plans and his foreign policy views. And Rubio clearly had anticipated, or if he hadn't, even better, had been able to think on uh, uh, on his feet and, and uh, uh, rather uh, abruptly rebutted the notion that he was not conservative enough for Republican voters. So both of those gentlemen uh, had a fine evening. Anyone stumble in your view? Right. Yeah. No, I think both of the the perceived outsiders, uh, so-called outsiders, Donald Trump and Ben Carson, did not have particularly good nights. Uh, Trump, as per, has been the case in the previous debates, when it came to matters of substance, policy substance, that is, he seemed to fade into the background. Yes, he has his bombastic views about immigration, uh, but when challenged on those, he, he didn't seem to have a, a great answer. And certainly when it came to other matters, foreign policy, fiscal policy, he didn't have much to say. Mr. Carson uh, stumbled repeatedly. Uh, most notably, he was asked about what uh, the causes of the fiscal crisis were, the financial crisis were, and he appeared to suggest that it was corporate buybacks by large banks, which I is the first time, I've, first time I've come across that particular explanation for the financial crisis. Uh, and when, again, it came to foreign policy, Mr. Carson did appear to be lost at times as to what he was trying to uh, 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 stand for. What did you make of the points on Wall Street regulation? Is that something that will continue to resonate in the campaigns? Well, certainly you have this populist streak amongst Republicans uh, and Republican primary voters, uh, mo most notably. Uh, whether that uh, turns into an ongoing anti-Wall Street sentiment, I, I don't know. I thought the, the variety of, uh, of, of opinions uh, uh, offered up about the Wall Street crisis and what we can do going forward were varied and, and frankly, very few seem to be based on um, the facts of the situation. Jeb Bush first declared that there would never again be a financial crisis on his watch. When challenged to that viewpoint, he quickly uh, turned uh, and uh, turned completely 180 degrees and said, "Well, the best he could he could hope for." He then suggested that the the solution was banks having greater capital adequacy reserves, seemingly uh, not not knowing that uh, one of the major um, impacts of Dodd Frank has been indeed a, a significant increase in capital adequacy reserves. We've already mentioned Mr. Carson. Mr. Trump had very little to say on the subject. Uh, Governor Kasich of Ohio railed against ten, uh, Senator Cruz's opinions that he would never bail out a large bank. Uh, Kasich clearly being of the uh, establishment wing of the party uh, who uh, would have supported efforts like TARP at the height of the crisis. So you had quite a varied opinion of individuals. Uh, I did not hear a concrete plan. Uh, much of the, the Republican rhetoric wants to repeal the Affordable Care Act, wants to repeal Dodd-Frank, wants to tear up the Iran Agreement. But uh, I didn't hear, certainly in the uh, financial regulation space, a, a detailed proposition for what would replace Dodd-Frank. Do you think there will be any slipping in the polls for Trump or Carson based on the performance? You know, I, as well as most people, have been rather surprised by the staying power of both of those individuals as we head out of the summer and, and firmly into the fall months now. We're, of course, it's a year out from the general election, and, and Trump and Carson continue to lead in most, if not all, national, as well as early voting, uh, early state, sorry, early voting state polling. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Trump continues to slip a little bit. Uh, Carson's staying power, um, I, I must admit, is something of, of a mystery. I do not firmly do not believe that he will be there uh, still standing when, when votes start being cast in a meaningful way next spring. I should anticipate that both uh, Cruz and Rubio receive a boost in the polls, whether that comes at the expense of Trump and Carson or some of the, the, the increasing, uh, increasingly large field of also rands is tough to, tough to say. Corey Bowles, good to see you again. Thanks so much for your expertise. Thank you. I'm Rhonda Shapler for The Street.